Okay. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, I welcome you all to the first lecture of our series for this month, which is called Protecting the Prayer. And inshallah, this month we'll be having three lectures. And the first lecture, inshallah, will be delivered today, titled How to Make Your Children Love the Salah. And this lecture, inshallah, will be delivered by our beautiful Ustad, our Sheikh Jamal Abdul Nasir. As you know, Alhamdulillah, our Sheikh Jamal Abdul Nasir, he has visited our masjid many, many times, Alhamdulillah. We know him very well. We know him as being the special student of our Sheikh. Sheikh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi. MashaAllah, he has learned the Qiraat, Ashara, um, the Ashara Qiraat from that Sheikh, well renowned Sheikh, Alhamdulillah. And he comes, and Sheikh Jamal, he comes to our masjid to benefit us and to, MashaAllah, amaze us with his words of wisdom. MashaAllah, um, Sheikh. And inshaAllah, we hope for him to come many more times, bidnillah ta'ala. جزاك الله خير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما تنفعنا به يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما مباركا ميمونا ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Many of us are parents and those who are not parents amongst us will inshallah ta'ala become parents but most likely they have younger siblings and if they don't, they have nieces and nephews. They have children that they interact with regularly. And it's very timely that this lecture has come when the new academic year has started, when everybody has gone back to school now. A lot of the people who are parents, who are guardians, they're very interested as it relates to the development of their children in the academic world or the academic paradigm. So they know what they're learning. And they dedicate a lot of time and effort towards this child's development. But it's very important for us to ask ourselves, where is the Islamic development of this child? If you are responsible for this child, which you are, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Each one of you is a guardian and you are responsible for your dependents. You will be asked about them يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And you're not going to be asked whether you took them to school or not. Nobody is saying do not do that. But if you did not take them to school, would you really be asked about that يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The answer is no. If the child did not graduate and did not wear the abaya, and do not wear the gown and the matching hat and take his degree in his right hand. You will not be asked about any of that yawm al-qiyamah. But if this child does not make it to heaven and paradise, you will be responsible as the guardian. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made this something embedded into the hearts of the sahaba. Ali radiallahu anhu, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the fourth caliph of the Muslimin, he used to say when he would speak about the children, Allimuhum wa Give them knowledge, educate them, and teach them about manners and etiquettes. Teach them about manners and etiquettes. This child that is growing up, it is not enough for him to know A, B, C, D, E, F, G until the end. It's not enough for him to know one, two, three, four, five and know how to multiply and divide and for him to be able to be writing or reading or speaking. No, it's not enough. Of course it's not. Where is his etiquettes with you as the father? Where is his etiquettes with you as the mother? Where are their etiquettes with Allah Rabbul Alameen? The Salaf al-Salih, they used to say the largest amount of time that was mentioned is 30 years. 
30 years we will not learn any knowledge we'll be busy with ilm a different type of ilm this is the ilm of adab and suluk etiquettes and character so later when we learn about etiquettes and character we will turn to knowledge and we'll be able to benefit from this knowledge and the greatest type of etiquette that one needs is the etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who created you and he has most right subhanahu wa ta'ala to your time and to your life قُلْ and say O oh Muhammad إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ that's my prayer. We're going to speak about that today, insha'Allah ta'ala. And my sacrifice, my life and my death are all with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person that came to this world lives in the kingdom of Allah. This kingdom belongs to Allah. It doesn't belong to anybody. And it's also very timely to show that the queen of a land had passed away. She passed away and she didn't take anything of her kingdom with her. None of us here, this whole room, this whole masjid is one of the biggest masajid in the UK. The amount of people who are here today are way more than the individual who passed. But I know for sure that if all of our wealth were to be added up, we will not be anywhere near, not the same, not even near. Even the wealth of our parents and our children and our siblings and our aunts and our uncles still, we will not. What did she take with her? Did she take anything? No, she didn't. Now what is awaiting her in the next life? This is the question that we all have to answer. Because you are going to take the same path as well. But alhamdulillah, you have iman, you are different. So even if you have nothing from this world, but you have Allah, you have everything. Man wajad Allah, famada faqad. Wa man faqad Allah, famada wajad. The one who has Allah, is he missing anything? No. The one who is missing Allah, what does he actually have? Your pockets are full, your bank account is full. You have money everywhere, stash of money lying everywhere. You have multiple wallets and multiple bank accounts and you have all of this. None of this will save you from the punishment of Allah. So your etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, An akthari ma yudkhilun nas al-jannah. What is that which puts people into jannah the most? He said, Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. Taqwa Allah, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And husnul khuluq, good etiquette with the people. These two things puts you in paradise. Nothing else does. So the other things that we are engaged in and we are busy with, are they going to take us to paradise? This is an honest question you must ask and seek an answer from your heart. The answer is no. Take your portion of the dunya, as we mentioned in previous lectures in this masjid. Do this. Nobody is saying don't. But how is your life spent, generally speaking? Look at your weeks, look at your months, look at your days, look at your hours, look at your phone usage, look at who you speak with, look at who speaks with you, look at what you search for, look at all of the things that you are engaged in, it will teach you about who you are. If you are a person of piety and a person of righteousness, your life will show this. And if you are a person of vice and a person of shortcomings and a person of deficiency, then your life will show this as well. And remember, you do not have a lot of time. That which has elapsed from your time that you have lived, and that which is left, that which has elapsed is more. And that which is left is less. That which is remaining is less. Take your zad. We all need a zad, ayyuhal ikhwa. We need a portion. What is our portion going to be in the hereafter? What is going to illuminate your grave? What is going to make you on that day where the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned that Allah Rabbul Alameen, he will call Adam alayhi salam. Adam, come. Adam was the first prophet. And Adam alayhi salam was the first man that was created. Adam come. He will come to Allah because Adam is a creation of Allah. He's a prophet, but he's a slave of Allah. So he comes to Allah and Allah jalla wa'ala says to him, Akhrij ba'th al-nar. Take the people of the nar, the fire, from all of your children. We are the children of Adam. Separate them from the other people and head them, lead them towards the fire. Adam alayhi salam, he doesn't know who these people are. So he asks, Wa ma ba'th al-nar? Who are the companions of the fire? Are they in the tens? Are they in the hundreds? Who are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Akhrij, take out from every 1,999 that are going to the fire. For every 1,000 people, one person will be saved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِ الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ 
ولو أعجبك كثرة الخبيث فاتقوا الله يا أولي الألباب لعلكم تفلحون قل أنسيت دم أو محمد that which is pure and that which is impure will never be the same they will never equate to be the same thing that which is good that which is bad can never be the same even if the bad is on the rise everything around you everybody around you society our society is different from the society of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the companions they would pray behind him they would eat with him they would sit with him they would drink with him they would talk to him they would look at him they would visit him they would walk with him they would do all of these things with him alayhi salatu wasallam and because of this their iman would rise we don't have this privilege so now we are with people of vice that are around us whether they are muslimin or whether they are not muslims so you find somebody for example making dua for somebody who died upon millatul kufr which dua is going to be raised to the sky that you make? Which prayer that you make is going to be accepted by Allah? Ma kana lil mu'minina. It's not befitting for the believers. Walladhina amanu and those who have believed. An yastawfiru lil mushrikeen. Walau kanu uli qurba min ba'di ma tabayyana lahum annahum ashabu al-jaheem. Ma kana lil nabihi. Walladhina amanu an yastawfiru lil mushrikeen. Walau kanu uli qurba min ba'di ma tabayyana lahum annahum ashabu al-jaheem. It's not befitting for the Prophet or those who have believed to seek forgiveness for somebody who died upon kufr. Now look at this. Somebody, a person comes, sometimes a person comes and he says, I don't really understand this stuff. It's a bit harsh, it's a bit this, it's a bit that. Are you contending with the speaker who's talking to you? Or are you contending with the Quran al Kareem? Are you now, you're in more danger than the person we're talking about. Do you realize that? <laughs> when you're contending with the speaker, he's a human being like you. Contend if you wish. You can contend. You're entitled to do so. But if you contend with the Quran al Karim, there is no Islam for you. قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ Is it Allah and His ayat and the messenger that you are mocking? Allah said this is the case, this is the case. Allah said this person goes to Jannah, this person goes to Jannah. Allah said this person goes to the fire, this person goes to the fire. Because Jannah and the fire doesn't belong to us, it belongs to Allah. And He's the one who grants admission to whoever He wants. Allah said this is the case, this is the case. So when you are following the crowd and you are following society and you are doing as they are doing, because you want to fit in, remember that you are not meant to fit in. You are meant to stay within the confines of Islam and the paradigm of Islam and the param parameters of Islam and that is it. That will give you paradise in the dunya and it will give you paradise in the hereafter. So over here, Ali radiallahu anhu, he said about the children, Allimuhum wa addibuhum. Educate them with Islamic knowledge and give them adab and akhlaq. Why? Because they're not going to learn this in school. They're not going to learn this in society or on the internet. How do you really know if you ask yourself a genuine question that your child, your brother, your sister, your sibling, your niece, your nephew, whoever it may be, won't be the next thug, the next criminal, the next gang member. You don't want it to be the case, but who gave you a guarantee? No one. So how are your efforts right now with regards to protecting them then, safeguarding them? What steps do you take? This is inshallah ta'ala what we want to speak about for the remainder of the lecture inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was known to be very easygoing. And he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves the easygoing person. The one who's able to mix with others and he's able to mix with them and gel with them very nicely. So when you're teaching them and when you're giving them adab and etiquettes, you do it by way of tahbib and targheeb through love and through persuasion. That's healthy. So when you're telling the child to pray the salah, the salah, it is the greatest act of worship. It is asasu hadha deen. It is a foundation of this deen. The one who has neglected his salah, fahuwa lima siwaha adiyah, the scholars they say. The one who neglects and abandons the salah, he's going to abandon everything else as well. The salah is meant to protect you. It is your anchor. If a person now goes into the water on a ship or on a boat, and he goes very far out, and there are waves and there are tides, what is going to protect you other than Allah? What is your means of protection? You must have an anchor, and that's what they do when they go out into the ocean. They'll place the anchor somewhere, so when they go out for a certain distance, it will stop and they won't go further than that. What is going to stop you from doing evil? It is the salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Indeed, the salah is the only act of worship that will prevent a person from falling into fahsha and munkar. Fahsha is everything which is evil and immoral. 
And munkar is everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his religion detest. If you pray the salah, it will stop you. Impossible. If you pray the salah ala wajh is sahih, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for you to pray, that you can engage in evil. But the majority of us, we come for Salatul Asr like we did now, perhaps we did something bad a little bit before, and perhaps after we do something bad a little bit after as well. Tayyib, how is this ayah working then? And you ask yourself a question, is the problem with the ayah, is the problem with you, is the problem with you? How many people are here in the room? We bring a dessert now from a nice place on the street. To, what is it called again? The high street where all the restaurants are over there. What? What's the other name? Curry, curry, curry Mao. So we go to Curry Mao and we go to a dessert shop and we bring dessert now. We ask the first person, do you like it? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Do you like it too? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Do you like it? Yeah. Do you like it? And we go to, do you like it? No, Allah, it's not nice. Tayyip, what's wrong? There's something wrong. What, what happened here with the sequence? Everyone else liked it. What happened when we came to you? Maybe then we taste the dessert, we double check, everything's okay. Everything's okay. Tayyip. So there must be something wrong with your taste buds. There must be something wrong with you. Are we going to blame the dessert? Or are we going to blame you? Are going to blame you? Similarly over here, the ayah is saying, if you pray salah, these things have to stop. You're praying salah, these things are continuing. They're growing. They're, they're multiplying. It was small monsters. Now they're becoming big beasts. What's going on? The salah is not right, right? There's an issue with the salah. Maybe you don't know the rulings of salah. Thus, you think you're praying, but your salah is not right. The Prophet ﷺ, sometimes he would see some of the people praying. He would rebuke them on the spot. He would say, Irja, salli, fa inna kalam tu salli. Go back and pray. Surely, indeed, you didn't pray right now. He thought he just prayed miskeen. And the Prophet ﷺ said, you didn't pray anything. Other reports, he'll say, you look at someone and he'll say, like, the way you're praying right now, I'm worried this is the prayer of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. Every single time we hear narration like this, for those who don't really understand what's going on, compare it to a worldly thing. Like some of us, we work in companies. Some of us, we're professionals. We're businessmen. When we see somebody who's like an amateur, doesn't know what he's doing, we take the role away from them. Like you don't know what you're doing. Does he have a right to get upset with you? No, you're just not the right person. Tayyib, we shouldn't get upset with that when it's a worldly thing. When it's a religious thing, don't get upset as well. You don't know how to pray. Unfortunately, you don't know. You have to learn now. There's no harm in not knowing. The harm is being arrogant and not wanting to know. Even if you reach 40, 50, 60 years and you are told your salah is not right. The sujood is not right. The limbs that are meant to be touching the ground, not all of them are touching the ground. The way you are doing your tashahud is wrong. Your feet are not in the right place. If someone tells you this, doesn't matter who you are, your age, your background, Accept it, say Jazakallahu khairan Can you tell me the right way of doing it? If you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your rank Man lillahi, rafa'ahu Allah The one who is humble before Allah, Allah will raise his rank So the salah, Allah said this about it Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar So the first thing we're going to mention about the salah this evening Is that the salah, it does away with immorality and evil So really and truly, we shouldn't be evil people We should all be pure If you're a pure person, Allah will accept everything you do the hadith has come. Inna Allah Ta'ala tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah the most high, he is pure, he is tayyib. And he only accepts that which is pure. So we ought to be pure. How do we purify ourselves? Through the salah. Like the Prophet ﷺ, he would give this example. If one of you have a pool outside of his house and he bathes in it five times a day, is there going to be any dennis? Is there going to be any filth left on his body? La la. Who here? Go, raise your hands. Who here takes a bath five times a day? Not really, right? Maximum two times for some of us. If you play football as well, maybe one more time for the football. Morning, evening, and then the football, or you do an exercise or a sport. Maximum. Five times a day, no one. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, if you do it five times a day, is there going to be any dennis left on his body? They said no. He said, wa kadharika salah. Salah is like that as well. You pray five times a day, not only is it going to stop you from evil and immorality, everything you did in the past from evil and immorality will be washed away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be cleansed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا مِنْ إِمْرِئٍ مُسْلِمٍ تَحْضُرُهُ صَلَاةٌ مَكْتُوبَةٌ فَيُحْسِنُ وُضُوءَهَا وَخُشُوعَهَا وَرُكُوعَهَا إِلَّا كَانَتْ كَفَّارَةً لِمَا قَبْلَهَا مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ مَا لَمْ تُؤْتَ كَبِيرًا وَذَلِكَ الدَّهْرَ كُلَّهُ there is no believing male or female that when an obligatory prayer comes to them, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, they establish it. فَيُحْسِنُ He perfects وَضُوءَهَا وَخُشُوعَهَا وَرُكُوعَهَا 
He perfects the rights of the prayer, the conditions of the prayer, the prerequisites of the prayer, the concentration of the prayer, the purity of the prayer. He perfects everything which is in regards to the prayer. Illa except kanat kafara talima qablaha min al dhunub. It's going to be a kafara, an expiation for all of the sins that you did. The scholars they say this means if you pray Asr now like we did, anything you did between Dhuhr and Asr is forgiven. You're going to pray Maghrib later, anything between Maghrib and Asr was forgiven. Isha, anything between Isha and Maghrib is forgiven. Fajr tomorrow, anything between Isha and Fajr is all forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, يَتَعَاقَبُونَ فِيكُمْ مَلَائِكَةٌ بِاللَّيْلِ وَمَلَائِكَةٌ بِالنَّهَارِ فَيَجْتَمِعُونَ فِي صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ وَصَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ there are angels that guard you and they take shifts and they come in large groups and they descend and they come down at Fajr and they come down at Asr. Look, they come down at the time of the prayer. And this is the kindness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is benevolence upon you. That he doesn't, come, he doesn't send them down when you're doing evil. So they can record your evil and take it back to him. He sends them down like, no, we just did Asr. They were just here right now. That's what we believe. We have Iman in Allah. We believe that hadith are true. يَتَعَاقَبُونَ فِيكُمْ مَلَائِكَةٌ بِاللَّيْلِ فَيَجْتَمِعُونَ فِي صَلَاةِ الصُّبْحِ وَصَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ We just did Asr now, they were just here now. So what do they do? They exchange reports with one another. And they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah asked them, كَيْفَ تَرَكْتُمْ عِبَادِي How did you leave my slaves? فَيَقُولُونَ They will say, تَرَكْنَاهُمْ وَهُمْ يُصَلُّونَ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ وَهُمْ يُصَلُّونَ We left them, they were praying. We came back, they were still praying. And this is the prayer. This is the report that is going to be lifted up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about you. So when you stand in this prayer, you stand with devotion. You stand with humility. You stand with awe. And you understand that when you're in this prayer, there's a secret conversation happening between the abd, the slave, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single time you read an ayah from the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah speaks back to you. You do not have to hear it because you won't hear Allah in this world. You won't see Allah in this world. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, My slave has just said, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, athna alayya abdi. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, hamadani abdi. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, athna alayya abdi. Maliki yawm al-deen, majjadani abdi. He just praised me, he's exalted me, he glorified me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says at the end of the ayah, when you make the dua, this is between me and my slave, and my slave will receive what he asks for. Wali abdi ma sa'al. This is the qima of the prayer. The prayer is the only act of worship which wasn't enjoined upon us on the earth. It was done in the skies. The Prophet ﷺ was taken on the night journey and he met the different prophets. He saw Musa alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he enjoined that the prayers were going to be 50. Musa alayhi salam told our Prophet that your ummah are not going to be able to pray 50 prayers in a day and a night. Imagine 24 hours you have to pray 50 prayers. Look at the struggle. And the condition we are upon today, 50 prayers. So he said, ask your Lord for takhfif to make it easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reduced it 40, 30, 20, 10. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made it five. Musa alayhi salam, he said, even five is too much. They can't do five. The Prophet alayhi salam said, I'm shy to go back to Allah after that. But you pray five and it was originally 50. And because of Allah's karam and jood, Allah's kindness and benevolence, you are rewarded for 50, but you only pray 5 because every act of worship is times by 10. 5 times 10 is 50. This is the Lord that you have. He calls you 5 times a day, so not that He benefits, that you benefit. He has other creations, He doesn't need you and I. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has 70,000 angels that go up every single day to a place known as Baytul Ma'mur. It's like the Kaaba, it's in the skies. They go there, they go there every day, all they do is glorify Allah. These are 70,000 new angels that go up the hadith mentions every single day. 70,000 new angels every day. So one angel when he goes up, like today for example, he will never get that opportunity again because of the amount of angels that Allah has. So he doesn't need you and I. He doesn't need us. The prayer is your only connection with Allah. Don't lose it. As for the children, you make them love it. We said through tahbib and targhib. Tell them why they are praying the salah. Tell them why if they pray the salah, what they're going to receive from it. And told them that the salah, it is miftahul khair. It is the key of all goodness. Do you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take you to this place? Do you want Allah to give you this thing that you want, this dream that you have? You want to be this person when you grow up? You want these things, don't you? It is only Allah who can give it to you. Mom can't give it, dad can't give it, Allah can give it. So because Allah is the only one that can give it, Allah gives it when you establish the prayer. Because the prayer is where you ask Allah, the prayer comprises of different components and elements 
from it is the sujood. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, this is the best time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything you want, the sujood. So increase in your invocations, supplications in the sujood. You teach them this. You teach them that if you leave the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that the one who leaves the prayer, he's going to take a path which is evil. How so? We know that Iblis al laeen Iblis, the shaitan, he was trialed with the prostration. He was told to prostrate before Adam alayhi salam. And you told him that Iblis used to be a righteous man. A lot of people don't even know this. Even if you don't know this, the evidence that he was righteous is that he was with angels. Why is the evil man an evil creation with angels? The angels are the most purest of Allah's creation. Because before that incident, he used to be good. So as Ibn Kathir mentions, he used to be with the angels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَ تِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمٍ we commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam فَسَجَدُوا They all prostrated إِلَّا Iblis, Except for Iblis أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He refused, that's what أَبَا means The same word أَبَا, refusal, has come in a hadith The Prophet ﷺ said كُلُّ أُمَّةِ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَا all of my ummah will enter into paradise except the one who refuses. The Sahaba was shocked at this statement. He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, is there anybody who will refuse Jannah? Who is this person that's going to do Aba? Who is this person that's going to say no to Jannah? He said, Man ata'ani dakhla al-Jannah. Wa man asani faqad Aba. The one who obeys me, he's the one that will enter into Jannah. The one who disobeys me is the one who said Aba. You don't have to say stuff. It's through your actions. I'm a Muslim. I don't pray though. I'm a Muslim, I don't fast though I'm a Muslim, I don't read Quran though طيب, this is just words It's the speech You can say anything A person says, I'm Somali No, I'm British No, no, alhamdulillah No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm this No, 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 I'm, I'm tall No, I'm short No, no, no I, yeah, You're just saying stuff now A person may think that you are marfu' al-qalam You may have a mental disorder You just speak and you utter whatever comes to your mind Iman constitutes of a statement on the tongue, belief in the heart, and actions on the limbs. Where are your actions exactly? A person goes to work and school, yeah, I'm a good student, no homework. Yeah, I'm a good student, absent. Yeah, I'm a good student, no school uniform. Yeah, what good student are you? No, alhamdulillah, I work in the, t I work in the office, I work in the company, I do this, I do that. They do nothing. This is all state. Allah doesn't accept this yawm al-qiyamah. So the person who leaves the prayer has to be worried. If uh, if Iblis's fall was due to one prostration he missed, how many salawat are we missing? One prostration, I'm not going to do it. How many salahs do you miss? You have to ask yourself this question. And the beautiful thing, alhamdulillah, is that it only requires one toba. One toba that's sincere, that you mean from your heart, that you tell Allah that you're never going to do this mistake again, and you're going to be upon the prayer from now on. All of your previous prayers that you miss will be forgiven by Allah. Allah forgives all sins. So it's very easy. We have to understand both sides. We are not allowed in Islam to just hear the nice things. And to just hear rahmah and hope and mercy. Because if you do this, a person will think that he's entitled to paradise. So the scholars, they don't allow this. And we are not allowed in Islam to only tell things that are scary and frightening. So a person is only fearful and he thinks there's no chance for him to get to paradise as well. That's wrong and that's wrong. But rather we come with hope after we do good. And we come with fear if we do bad. Ask yourself a question. Are you going to be fearful if you're doing the right thing? You should still be fearful of Allah at all times. But are you really scared and worried that Allah is going to do wrong and oppress you if you're doing the right thing? No. Similarly, how comes you're not scared when you're doing everything that's wrong as well? A person has to turn a new leaf and a new page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it starts with the salah. You never leave a salah. Even if it's happened in the past that you left the salah, you say, from today, this very day, this very hour, this very time, in this very place, I am not going to leave any salah ever again until I die. And all the salawat that I may have missed before, may Allah forgive me. This is a tawbah that you make. I'm not going to miss any salah from today until I pass away. If you take this covenant upon yourself, that by itself will give you all of the reward of all of the prayers you're going to pray in the future, before you even do it. Because you are rewarded by your intention. And it's a sincere intention that has come from a sincere heart. You do this.
The second thing you do is that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you firm upon the prayer. You come with the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءِ Oh Allah, make me from those who establish your prayer and make my family from them as well. Oh my Lord, accept my dua. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءِ So you ask Allah, because if He doesn't give you tawfiq, you can't do anything yourself. The third thing you do is as much as possible, whether it's a working day, whether it's a weekday, whether it's a rest day and it's a weekend, whatever day is meant to be because salah, there's no time off, then ensure you know what the times of the prayers are. You know what time fajr is, you know what time duhur is, you know what time every prayer is. You ensure nothing is going on around that time. Nothing. If something ends up happening, you say, I'm really sorry, just give me five minutes, I'm going to have to come back. Whether this is a Muslim, whether it's a non-Muslim, whether it's work, whether it's school, whether it's the head teacher, it can be anybody. If you do this for Allah's sake, you will only see khair. لَن تَجِدَ إِلَّا خَيْرًا Don't be worried about makhluq and miskin. لا. Salah comes, salah comes. But be kind to the people as well. And every time the messages we are giving, we have to make it really clear. When you are in school, for example, if you are going to school or university, or you're in the workplace, for example, it doesn't mean you have a fight with your boss or you have a fight with your teacher, no. You say respectfully, I need a five minute break. Whether you told them what you're going to do or not, that's up to you. But you have to request this. If they say you can't, then you pray where you are. So for example, you're in the classroom now, you're in the meeting hall, you want to go to another room in order for you to have khushu and pray properly. They want you here, for example. Here, I wouldn't encourage for us to be very rebellious and say, no, I have to go to the other room. Because the point is to pray, not where you pray. So I can just pray right here. Okay, I'm just going to go to the side. They may be very shocked that you're taking your break for this action. Because maybe they don't do that. They take their breaks maybe to have to smoke, for example. They do that. They go outside, they step outside, they smoke, for example. Or they go outside, they take a phone call. But you're going to pray, you're putting your face on the floor. Don't worry about what people think. The people around you at that time that are not doing this action, you're the only one that's worshipping Allah, right? You are the one that Allah loves, not them. That's how you see it. So whatever you do, you ensure my Fajr, my Dhuhr, my Asr, my Maghrib, my Isha, I need to plan my day properly. If you do this, the beautiful thing is, your day is going to be illuminated with light and khair and barakah, tawfiq. The person, ask the uncles, ask the mashayikh, ask the fathers who are here now, ask the people who pray in the masjid over here. When you pray Fajr in the masjid, Fajr is just an example, but all the other prayers as well. But because Fajr is at the start of the day, every single person always says, my day was filled with khair today. I loved my day, so it was an amazing day, and it's because I started correctly. Starting correctly is not starting with Weetabix, it's not like this. It is starting correctly with prayer, the salah. Then Allah is the one, Yubarik, He's the one that's going to bless. So you come to the masjid. You can't come to the masjid? Okay, how are we going to make the salah something special? We are going to make a musalla in the house. Whether it's in the living room or your bedroom, it could be anywhere. This is a special place of prayer. Some of the scholars of the past, they had this in their house. They would have a special corner for the salah. Why? Why is that? Why that same corner? They want Yom Al Qiyamah for that place to testify for them. Look how they would think. I want to pray in the same space all of the time. Over here. And we have it in the masajid. I'm sure even in this mission we know the Mu'addin. Normally I always see him over there. And the uncles, there's certain uncles when I come from Maghrib and Isha, they're always sitting in the same place. They all know this. They're very smart like that. I want to sit in this, 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 this two meters by two meters or whatever it is. I want it to testify for me on al Qiyamah. Have that for yourself in the house. Someone may ask, like we were asked in the lecture we had before this as well. How do I have khushu'ah? How do I build khushu'ah? If you go to the masjid, go early, go at the adhan time. If you have a masjid at home that you made, so to speak, then you ensure you go to the place of prayer before the salah. So at home as well, we're going to make a calendar. Dhuhr jama'ah, the whole house is going to pray together 1.30. Because Masjid al-Furqan, they pray 1.30. We're going to pray at home 1.30. It's not right that the mother and the father and the children, they meet only at the dinner table. They meet over coffee and tea at night and they speak for a little bit. La, why are we not meeting for dhikr? Why are we not meeting for salah? Why are we not meeting for Quran? Let us change this. If you are old, if you are young, whoever you are that's listening to this, you be the one who brings the change. The salah from now on, we pray together. Select the salawat first that everybody's at home, like Fajr. Fajr, for example, most people are at home. So when you're at home for Fajr, from this morning, tomorrow morning, tomorrow is Sunday, we're going to tell everybody tonight, Fajr jama'ah in the house is what time should we say? 
What do we pray now in Masjid al Furqan? 5.45. Third 5.45 as well at home. 5.45. Whether you wake up my friend 5, whether you wake up 5.15, whether you wake up and you're still doing this, 5.45 we're going to come. If you're not away, we're going to put a bucket of water on your face. Lazim. Because if you are going to miss work, we will take you out of bed, right? If you're going to be late for school, mom and dad will take you out. La salah is ola. Salah is more important. I'm going to wait until 5.40. I'll give you five minutes before the salah. If I don't find you downstairs, I'm taking you out, dragging you to the toilet. Some of the mashayikh, they are like this. And they put this into the hearts of their children. They want their child to pray salah. Look at this. And they want their child, for example, to memorize Quran. So the parent is smart. They know Quran is something amazing. But at the end of the day, Quran is not like salah. Salah is the head. So when they want the child to memorize Quran, and the child is not really reacting correctly, they don't do anything too severe. When it comes to the prayer, the parent will pick up the child. The child is like, get up, it's time for prayer. Wake up, wake up, wake up. The child's not picking it. So the dad picks up the child. He takes him to the bathroom. He puts him in the bathtub. He turns on the water. Yalla wudu. Yalla. Qum. Like this. Hada sahih is correct. The Prophet ﷺ said, Command your children to establish the prayer at the age of seven. It's not befitting 15, 16, 17, 20, 25 year olds still not praying. Ghalat kabir. It's because we have left the traditions of Muhammad ﷺ. Seven years old, we should have been commanding them. Ten years old, we should have been taking action against them. وَضْرِبُوهُمْ A take action against them. لِعَشْرٍ When they are ten years old. Reignite the love of salah in their hearts, the virtues of salah in their hearts. Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. It does away with immorality and evil. If you pray salah, you will be forgiven for all of the other actions you've done in the past. One person, he became the most cursed creation of Allah. He left one prostration. We've left a lot of prayers. After they understand all of this, this is a summary of the whole lecture. You tell them you're one repentance away. Just repent back to Allah. Never leave another salah. Tell them to make that vow that we said from today when never going to miss another salah until death and then set up the musalla at home inshallah ta'ala for all of the prayers try to get there early if 1.30 is the jama'ah at home from now on inshallah ta'ala 1.15 everybody should be there praying sunnah, adhan has to be called we have to select the mu'addin in the house from tonight inshallah, the imam in the house has to be selected from tonight inshallah ta'ala and when you do this wallahi you will flourish, you will become a person of prosperity and success hadha akhiruhu wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته